So this one's gonna be about learning and how to learn faster and or accelerate the learning to boost your career, as the article is actually called. And this is actually from a new site, but as always more after the intro. From a new site. I've actually never been on this site. Um, also not just in my leisure time or something. It's it's completely new. Completely new. And I do hope that... Oh. <laughs> There's actually kind of a limited amount of articles that you can read there. So that I, I really do hope that everything is working quite fine there. And that I actually don't have to reread, reread it just on another day or something. But yeah. With that being said, hello, welcome back to the next episode of the Self Development with Tactics fucking podcast. And I'm pumped. I'm pumped for this episode, even though I'm hungry and even though I've actually forgotten about recording this episode. Nearly. Like, nearly. You know, almost. But yeah, um, because I do not want to forget about it, this episode is also available as a podcast. You know, this actually is a podcast and it's basically like the video for the podcast or to the podcast, which means that there's also an audio only version of it, which means that you that you might like it more if you can listen to this, you can listen to this particular episode right here, um, and the link is down in the description. So if you are learning better through audio, and, or if you do just need to be a little bit more efficient, since I think, at my point of view, it is more efficient to listen to something because you're able to do something simultaneously. Like you're able to just walk your dog while you're listening to the episode, you're able to work out or go jogging while you're listening to the episode. So there's a lot of advantages to listening to the episode. But of course, some people like to just watch the episode. And that's also totally, totally, totally fine. It's totally good as well. And this is also the reason why I'm having both. You know, people can decide between the audio thing and also the video thing. You know, it depends on what you like more. But yeah, as I said before, we're going through something new. And as you can see on the left side, uh, we are on the Harvard Business Review site, and I've actually never been on the site. A uh, site. <laughs> but it actually seems to be a, a pretty good one, I at least hope. And maybe it's just because it's from Harvard, and Harvard is just a brand, and I assume that it is good just because of this brand. But yeah, you know, I hope. You know, let's say that I really hope that this is going to be a good one. But uh, something that has to be pointed out is that this article is basically also just the transcribed version of a podcast, you know, and or of a conversation. So if you do want to listen to this podcast, so if you do want to actually listen to the article that I'm just going to going to read then, then please go into the description or into the show notes if you're on the podcast and check out the links, you know, if the link isn't there because of some reasons or if the link isn't working, which can actually be the thing. Um, please hit me up on social media. I'm going to solve that and I'm going to send you the article or something. If you can't find it on your own, I'm definitely going to do that. But yeah, so please, as I said, go down into the description to check out the link um, for this particular article. If you do want to read the article on your own, which might also be a thing that you want to do. And or if you want to listen to the podcast, I assume that they're having. But I'm going to read. Accelerate learning to boost your career, which definitely makes sense. Um, It is an article from October the 22nd of 2019. Scott Young, who gained fame for for teaching himself the four-year MIT computer science curriculum in just 12 months, or one year, says that the type of fast focused learning he employed is possible for all of us. Whether we want to master coding, become fluent in a foreign language or excel at public speaking. And in a dynamic fast paced business environment that leaves so many of us stepped or strapped for time and struggling to keep up. But he believes that the ability to quickly develop new knowledge and skills will be a tremendous asset. It definitely is. You know, it's always pretty nice to be able to learn something new really, really, really fast. After researching best practices and experimenting on his own, he has developed a set of principles that any of us can follow to become ultra-learners, as he calls them apparently. Young is the author of the book Ultra Learning, Master Hard Skills, Outsmart the Competition and Accelerate Your Career. And I gotta have to say that being able to learn things really fast is definitely a pretty big advantage over other people, over the competition, because this is not something that everybody is able to do. You know, just unless you actually put in put in the time and also the effort and the work to actually get an ultra learner or to become an ultra learner. But I think 
it's totally nice, you know, it's totally nice to being able to learn something in one year that normally takes four years and maybe even more years, you know, because who says that everyone's going to just succeed at learning this four-year MIT course or is going to not fail during it. So yeah, it's maybe also going to take more than four years for some people as well. But um, do I believe that this is actually something that everybody can learn? I guess, yeah, some sort of, but also some sort of do not think that this is possible for, for all the people, you know. The thing is, uh, with generalizations, it's always going to be just not good. You know, there's always going to just be some people that are not able to, to do that. Maybe they're handicapped physically or mentally or, or some sort of this. Or it's just because they really don't like to learn things, new things. And or they do just really not put in the time and effort um, to learn this strategy and or tactic or technique but yeah so i really do not like generalizations you know there's always and and this is also the beauty of life you know there's so uh, many variables and there's so much so many different facets in life that generalizations are actually kind of a way to kind of leave them out and and i do not really think that this is a good way to communicate often um, but i also think that it's just nice to say you know that everyone is able to do that in theory, you know, it's always nice to say that and it always sounds good if you're able to say it. But yeah, let's actually read the transcribed version of this article and or the podcast, actually. Alison Beard, um, which seems to be the person who is interviewing Young, so Scott Young, I guess at least, I don't know. Alison Beard, welcome to the HBR idea cast from Harvard Business Review. I'm Alison Beard. If you listen to this show before or a close follower of HBR, you know a couple of things. One, to succeed in today's workplace, you need to always be learning, adapting and growing. Your current knowledge and skills will only get get you so far. Which is definitely the case uh, for, I, th- I, I would say, most of the industries, but some industries are just like not really evolving that fast. So um, I don't know, like if you're in the tech space, you just really gotta have to learn things, you know, especially if it is about VR, um, AI, AR, all those things, you gotta have to really learn some things and or some new things and you always have to be just uh, on the newest update of things (laughs) or something, I don't fucking know. And you just really have to learn things and you constantly have to learn things just because this particular space in this particular area is first of all so diversified, you know, which is actually the case for a lot of different areas as well and other areas as well. But it is also evolving. It's all evolving really, really, really quickly. At least I assume that, you know, and maybe I even hope that as well, some sort. (laughs) But yeah, let's see. Two, we feel more stressed and crunched for time than ever. How do we fit all this necessary self-improvement into our lives while also trying to balance the the, the daily demands of of a job? Outside activities, personal obligations and ideally at least a bit of rest. Today's guest says the answer might be something called ultra-learning, a strategy for developing expertise in areas from coding to foreign languages to public speaking. So in extremely quickly time or just extremely quickly. Scott Young is the author of the book Ultra Learning, Master Hard Skills, Outsmart Accommodation and blah, 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 blah. And now the whole interview actually begins. Scott Young says, oh yeah, it is great to be here. Alison Beard, Beard, I'm sorry, Alison Beard. So how exactly do you define ultra learning? How different is it from scramming or cramming for a test or speed reading? Speed reading, by the way, you know, to just <laughs> once again, um, get into it uh speed reading is something that i've been reading about and i've been hearing about and i've been just uh just yeah i I tried to did i try to to actually be a speed reader or try to learn speed reading i some sort of looked into some information and i got some information i looked at it and um i've i've tried to 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 get the basics and whatsoever but since i'm not really such a big reader um, I like to read and I've liked to read and I still read quite a lot of things through the podcast. Actually, besides the podcast, I'm just besides the podcast and Seth Godin's blog, I'm really not reading such a lot unless it is some sort of a caption on Instagram or some sort of this or comments. So basically, in the end, I'm reading quite a lot, you know, also because of school and all those things. But um, I don't know if speed reading is actually. Like, I've tried it, you know, and it didn't really work for me. This is what I'm just, this is what I'm willing to communicate. So I tried it, 
but it wasn't really not it, it wasn't really something that is working for you for me at least um it might be working for you and it might also just be a pretty good thing to just look it up see um, and or look for some techniques and some basic information so that you're able to just test it and try it out and see if it is working for you and if it just makes sense for you as well but i gotta have to say like Maybe it's just also because I'm mainly reading in a foreign language, which is English for me, you know, because I'm not a native speaker. I'm my, my mother tongue is German. So therefore, this might also be a variable. But I don't know. I really don't. The thing is, it might work for you. So please try it out. Please have a look at it. And please get just some basic information on it. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead with this interview. So Scott Young says, right, so I wouldn't define it in terms of being like, cramming a test or speed reading. Rather, the way that I look at it is finding people who have accomplished really impressive things with self-directed learning projects, not going to a school and having to spend four years in university or even longer if you're doing grad school, but teaching themselves the skills that they wanted to have. So it's more like just, uh, what is it called? It's like some something like auto, like an autobiography is something, so a biography that you have written yourself you know so the person that the biography is about has written the biography as well and it's out of it's, i only know uh out to deduct uh, which is like a german word for somebody that learns something on his or her own but how do maybe it's also an, an english word but i don't know let's actually see Most often it's about pronunciation. Like a lot of German people are really not able to pronounce English words or to just pronounce anything in English. And there is often just some really basic things that that really drive me crazy sometimes. You know, I I also have to say that my pronunciation might not be just on the really top of my game or really top of the game all the time. You know, especially if it is about something that I'm not really knowledgeable in, then there's gonna be some mistakes, of course. But uh, at my point of view, I'm, I'm pretty good, you know, I do just really have to admit that for me and for myself, I'm, I'm really not bad at English or at speaking English, at communicating English. I, I've really improved throughout this year that I'm having the podcast that I'm recording here. I'm, I'm sitting here and recording here. It really, really, really tremendously improved my English. It really did, you know. It also makes sense, you know, if you're using a language every single day and you also have to communicate with it, um, whether it be speaking or writing or listening and or reading, like I'm doing everything. I'm doing everything every single day, which is nice, which is really nice. But I would say that the speaking itself really improved the English and improved my English because I, I really have to think really quickly. First of all, you know, I'm also having to kind of use all the vocabulary that I'm having, you know, because... Because, yeah, you know, I just need it. But, yeah, I, I do not really want to waste a lot of time with talking about this. So, and often what they would be focused on was how to how do they get exactly what they need. So, whether that was public speaking or programming or building a business, they were focused on acquiring what helped them the most. And that's often how you can learn something more quickly is... And that's often how you can learn something more quickly is if you are directing it towards what you care about and what you really want to master, not just someone who's made who's made some arbitrary curriculum. Yeah, it just makes sense, you know, to just direct your path to the thing that you actually want to learn. It does make sense, you know, it does really make sense. And it also does make sense that it is saving a lot of time for you because the thing is, I think public school and school in general is a pretty pretty good example for that like we are learning so many things that we are not really interested in and we're still learning them and it's still going to be just something that our kids are going to learn and their kids are going to learn i think it's i'm just really i'm really looking forward to seeing how school will change also um how it will change through technology and because of all the technology that we are going to have in the future it's going to be interesting you know it's going to be interesting there's so many things that i'm actually looking forward to to be honest like flying cars and <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to it like I'm not even kidding I'm really looking forward to it but I I kind of doubt that that I'm gonna see that but I'm hoping you know I'm hoping 
Maybe I'm going to see Mars colo uh, colonization. Maybe this is something that I'm able to see, but uh, we will see. Elson Beard. And how did you get interested in this style of learning? Scott Young. My kind of... Uh, my kind of first introduction into this was actually during a moment of struggle. So I was in university and I was living in France. I had a chance to go study abroad for a year and I was really keen to learn French. And it turned out that it was actually really difficult. I really struggled to learn French and I found that most of the people around me spoke to me in English all the time. I was kind of discouraged about this and I was chatting with a friend from back home and I was sort of saying, it's so hard to learn French and it takes so long and it is so difficult. And he said... Well, have you, he have you heard of Benny Lewis? So it's Benny, like B-E-N-N-Y, and Lewis, L-E-W-I-S. <laughs> so Benny Lewis has a website very modestly titled Fluent in Three Months. Now, Benny speaks about, I think, 10 plus languages, especially how he's learned, <clears throat> how he's learned some even in the inter uh, intervening years since this story took place. And I was just blown away by this is uh, by this is someone who's not just trying to learn languages and not just learning them effectively, but he's uh, but he has this very intense and ambitious goal of uh, I guess learning even more languages, I assume. And so meeting him was sort of my first introduction in the in this world of ultra learning or of people who take on very aggressively and intense learning projects to learn things quite quickly. Since then, I've met a lot of people in different dom domains that convinced me that this is a more general approach than just learning languages. Alison Beard again. So if you're thinking about ways to boost your career, how do you pick exactly the right thing to learn that is going to help you advance in the way that you want? Is it something that is clearly connected to your job now or something you think you might need years in the future? So this is actually a pretty difficult question, I gotta have to say, because we can't look into the future. Of course, um, we often can actually see some signs for the future in the present. And this is really something that we all have to look out for. Like, the thing is, a lot of people say like, well, you know, they, uh, it, uh, you know this roboter or this uh, robot or whatever, it took my job and I'm like jobless right now and I'm unemployed and whatnot. And I gotta have to say that we are always having signs in the present for the future and what uh, what the future is going to bear for us. And I really got to have to say that a lot of people are just ignoring that. And if you're ignoring that, it is just your fucking fault. It is your fucking fault then that you're not employed anymore because some robot is having your job right now because it is way more efficient than you are doing it. Something that Seth Godin said is that if you're actually working on a task, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be just overtaken by just AI or some other robotic stuff. But if you're just working on projects, projects that are actually somehow managing certain tasks, then it's not going to be taken over by AI, AI that quickly and or just in the near future. But if it is only a task, if you're only doing a task, then it's definitely going to be taken over by AI, maybe even in the near future. I know it depends on the industry and depends on whether it makes sense for the industry and not and or not. But yeah, you know, if it is a task like baking bread, if this is even English, I don't know if it's baking bread, baking, I, I think it is. <laughs> I really don't know. Or if it's like cutting wood, if it is like making uh, food, I guess as well. And, and all those things, well, is making food, well, making food is something different, you know. You're basically also kind of managing tasks, you know. If you're just kind of, think about cooking as okay every single step that you're having to do is a is a task for its own then you could also say okay you're well then you're actually doing just a bunch of tasks a bunch of this different tasks but um, it is not really something that you have to think about like of course you have to think about recipes and you have to think about letting it taste pretty good but in the end it is only tasks in the end you're cutting things you're chopping things you're kind of salting your water you're just putting your spaghetti into the water <laughs> And all those things. So in the end, it is actually only tasks. And uh, this is just something that robotics and the AI and all the other things are able to do. So yeah, you know, please look out for that. You know, please really do not be such a person that is like, okay, you know, I'm not going to have a job in the future. And then you're really not doing something about it. You know, if you actually notice that, if you clearly can see that, then please 
do something about it. Unless you're actually retiring in two years, then who gives a fuck, I guess, you know, unless it could actually harm you in such a way or in some way, then you should definitely do something. So if something harms you, please do something. And if you can see it, do something. This is my take on that. Like it, it always really drives me crazy to, to, to always see and hear people just acting like a victim, even though they are not. And even though they're, they could have been able to just do something against it and do something about it, I, I really never ever liked it. And it's, it's actually the case, not that rarely to be honest. Like a lot of people are, the, the thing is being a victim and playing the victim is something that's really fucking easy. And this is also, I guess, at least at my point of view, uh, one of the reasons why a lot of people are doing that. You know, it is really easy to be like, okay, I'm going to blame you, you know, because it is just your fault, because I'm saying that, you know, even though it might be my fault or just half of it might be my fault, but saying and or telling somebody or blaming somebody else is just way easier. And I can understand that, you know, blaming somebody else and just not being in charge and not being responsible for something doesn't really feel good first of all but it is easy and it's just yeah there's not going to be a lot of work involved for you you know because you don't have to change anything you have to wait you have to wait for the other person to change something until you can feel good again or you can just go ahead again you can do something again or feel something again but yeah i'm gonna move on just being in the mindset of focusing on learning, regardless of whether the skill you're learning is exactly the best skill that you should be learning or whether it is just uh, whether it's just this might be useful and then it ends up becoming helpful later on. I think the attitude of, for, of orienting your career around always learning and always having a learning project and always upgrading your skill is very valuable. However, I think there are two ways you can approach it. One way is to try to figure out what would be the best skill for you to learn right now. And a technique that is very val valuable for that is what we call the expert interview method. The expert interview method is basically look at people who are two or three steps ahead of you in your career that you want to go, to go in the future. So, uh, so that could be they have the job that you want to have, they have the level of, pr of prestige that you would like to have, and they're doing the kind of work that you would like to be doing and talk to them. And talk to them and figure out what was their career trajectory, how did they progress in their current career, so you can look at what kinds of skills might have played a factor in that. Um, something that um, another word you might be using for that is modeling. Uh, I would I would actually say that Tony Robbins actually kind of formed this word and actually made this word relatively popular. Because he's always using it, you know, he's always using modeling and he was often talking about modeling and he's still often talking about modeling. And modeling is basically looking at people that are just steps ahead of you and look at, yeah, the way they did it, you know, from getting at where you are right now to where they are right now. How did they do it? What did they have to do? What skills did they have to have or have to accumulate for being able to do that? And all those questions, all those questions that just lead to how were they able to get to this particular place? Really important and really it, it really does make sense. And it also again reminds me of Seth Godin because Seth Godin isn't really a big fan of mentorship and mentors because um, I don't exactly know why, you know, he's talking about it just really, really often and I could recall it. Um, like, no, I'm, I'm not able to recall it, but I've I've read about it. But the whole point is that he thinks that heroes are way better because you don't really have to have a relationship relationship with heroes. If somebody is a hero, it just could be a social media personality. It could be, uh, I don't know, the president of the States. It could be just another president of your country. It could be just somebody that you're having some information of. And if you're having some information of somebody and or their life, their actions, um, their, their skills, their attitude, just things around this particular person then you're able to model this person which means and or just have it as a hero or have his him or her as a hero um, which means that you're just going to do what this person is doing or was doing something else because this again reminds me of something something that actually Gary Vee now said is that it doesn't really make sense to do something that somebody did it's very really really important to point out that this person did it 
You know, it's not about doing it, you know, and that this person is going to do it and whatnot. It is about that this person did it. You know, it is something in the past and this person did something in the past. And doing some things in the future or in the now that some people did in the past might or might not be a pretty good idea. Um, in a lot of in a lot of scenarios, in a lot of in a lot of ways, it's going to be good. It's going to be pretty good. It's going to be actually very very good, you know. But it might often lead to something like a result that you maybe do not like. I guess you know if it is actually something like like you always have to look out for the for the person as well. Like if the person lived like a hundred years ago and you're basically doing the exact same thing. I don't know if it is working and I, I don't know if it is going to work, you know, actually kind of adapting it to, to just nowadays and to the time we're having now, to the age we're having now, definitely makes sense and it definitely is a good thing to do. So please look out for that, you know, please look out for the past versus the future versus the present and or the whole relationship and the correlation there is because there is between those three things. Maybe when they're, uh, when they were, transitioning from let's say technical work to a leadership position they had to learn a lot of soft skills or maybe they have to go from being okay in a particular domain to being one of the best but the other thing i think is valuable is just embarking on those kinds of projects can be valuable even if you don't spend a spend a ton of time doing research figuring out what the best possible skill is so one of the gentleman that I had a chance to work with in researching for this book did his project about public speaking. And the funny thing about the project is that he didn't have some real strong desire to become this great public speaker. He was just thinking, you know what, uh, you know what, <laughs> maybe public speaking would be useful. And he ended up doing this very intensive learning project over a period of about seven months where he was speaking multiple times a week, sometimes even twice a day. He was getting feedback from various sources using all of the principles I discussed in the book. And he went from having very little experience, maybe only having done a handful of speeches in his entire life, to being a finalist for the World Championship of pu Public Speaking, which is a conference put on by Toast Toastmasters every year where 23,000 plus people compete to get the top spot for the best public speaker. And the funny thing about this wasn't just that he was able to achieve this result, but it affected essentially an entire career change that he and, he and the person he was working with on this project ended up becoming public speaking consultants and forming a business around it. So in the end, you know, as you can see, he did something, he did something, something that he wasn't, he, he believed in it, you know, but he didn't really think that this is something for him, I guess, you know, let, let's just call it like that. And he still did it. And in the end, it just really evolved into something pretty fucking nice. And so I think this is also an example of how you, how, uh, an example, how if you just pick a skill that might be valuable and you really take it seriously and really explore what it means to get good at it, it can often lead to opportunities that you don't even uh, foresee in advance. Again, Alison Breed, so I bet you can anticipate this question based on my introduction, but how on earth are we supposed to find the time for this? Especially people who are busy, ex uh, busy executives, people who have huge family commitments. It is actually pretty easy, you know, you just take the time. But I'm actually looking forward to the question where it's about what is and how to do it. It might just be kind of in the middle of it. And I do not really want to talk about it once again, I guess. Maybe I will. Maybe I have to since we're already 28 minutes in. Like, yeah, I'm going to have to do another episode on this particular topic. But I got to have to say that this episode wasn't really satisfying for me. Like, it's it's been one of these episodes again that I didn't really like because um yeah because of the speaking part and it's it's most often it is the speaking part why i don't like a certain uh, a certain uh certain episode um besides the fact that sometimes i do not know and i do not like an episode just because i don't think that there is a lot of value in it this time i think there is some value and there is some things that maybe have sparked some ideas in your head in your mind which is something that's definitely valuable at least in my point of view but again my perspective on what is value and what is not valuable uh, is just really unnecessary and also really irrelevant since it is about you, about the consumer, about this, about my audience, about those people that are seeking to 
um, consume my things. You know, it is really not about what I think about my content. It is about what you think about my content. But I, I have to say, like, the speaking part wasn't that good today. You know, even though I'm able to read relatively fast and also speak relatively fast, which might or might not be a good thing, I don't actually know as well. You know, there's so many variables and there's so many things that I might find good, but you really don't find good. And it is what it is, I guess. But I really do still hope that there have been some ideas in this particular episode that you have liked and that also sparked some sort of an idea and something else in your head, which has really been nice to hear that. So um, if you've liked the episode, please, you know, subscribe to the podcast and also please subscribe to the um, YouTube channel and also leave a like and already le <laughs> leave a rating um, on the podcast as well. And it would really be nice. It would really mean a lot to me, you know, since I'm actually putting in quite a lot of time into what I'm doing right here, you know. But yeah, it would just be nice. Thank you in advance, which is actually some sort of thing that you should never ever say because then you actually assume that people are going to do that. I'm not assuming that. If you didn't like the episode and if you didn't actually watch the episode, please don't subscribe. You know, the content on this platform or on this channel and or this podcast is not going to be for you, I guess, unfortunately. But yeah, uh, I wish you the best health of happiness and all success. And I also hope you're going to remind yourself when you're going to be remembered, which means your legacy, which means that uh, you might be just a nice person then being remembered as a nice person, which is a pretty great thing. But the problem there is that we are 7.7 .7 people, 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet, which means there's going to be a thousand, one hundred thousand, ten people that just dislike you or even hate you. And it is what it is. Like, maybe it's just in our nature. I don't know. But uh, three other questions that I hope that you're going to ask yourself are why are you here, what are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most. And those three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea. And uh, because a lot of businesses started out with having a solution for a problem that really pissed them off. At least uh, really a lot of companies did that and it also just makes sense. And you're probably also having something that isn't solved just up to this point, but it's still bothering you like hell. But yeah, um, see you soon. See you the next time. You know, to see you the next time, really please subscribe. If this is even a sentence, I don't know. But yeah, I'll uh, see you hopefully at least.